Cody Bellinger has had quite the career so far, making his debut in 2017, making the All-Star team and winning the Rookie of the Year that year, to go on two years later to make another All-Star team and win the MVP this time in 2019, only to see his play completely fall off and to get non-tendered after only his age 26 season. But here to start 2023 in his first season with the Cubs on basically a one-year prove-it deal, out here playing to save his career in Major League Baseball, Bellinger's putting up numbers like it's 2019 again. But is he all the way back? During the 2019 season, Bellinger played in 156 games, blasting 47 home runs while slashing 305, 406, 629, for a 1.035 OPS with a 161 WRC plus, so he was about 61% better offensively than your average hitter, and 7.8 F war has him just under MVP level production, so it's fair to say he deserved winning that MVP. Now that power that we saw from Bellinger that season was part of what made him such a dangerous hitter. We saw him ranked in the 83rd percentile in exit velo, the 86th percentile in hard hit percentage, and the 88th percentile in barrel rate, which is when you hit the ball really hard within the range of the best launch angles to do it to get really good results. Now there are a lot of hitters that have really good power in Major League Baseball. They're those batting practice champs, but not everybody can use it effectively in the games. And that a lot of the times comes down simply to the pitches that a hitter decides to swing at. As a hitter, you can't do damage on every single pitch, right? There are pitchers pitches for a reason. That breaking ball diving down and away from you right on the corner. So letting those tough pitches go and taking advantage of the mistakes that get left out over the plate, oftentimes that's what separates really good hitters from great hitters. And when he was at his peak, Bellinger was one of the most patient hitters in baseball. In 2019, Bellinger was in the 82nd percentile in chase rate, and because he was chasing so few pitches out of the zone, we saw him in the 95th percentile in walk rate, top 5% in the league. And this all is what made him such a dangerous hitter because it put pitchers in an almost impossible situation where they have to absolutely live right on the edges of the zone. Because if they miss out of the zone for a ball, he's not gonna help them out and change some of those into strikes by chasing them. But if they missed over the plate, He's sitting there waiting to take advantage of that and absolutely launch those mistakes. This 2019 season though would unfortunately be the peak of Bellinger's career as we've seen it so far. Now we saw his numbers start to drop a little bit in 2020, but honestly, everyone kind of gets a bit of a pass for that 2020 season. But there is one thing that happened in the playoffs that year that we gotta talk about. While he was celebrating a home run in the NLCS, Bellinger ended up dislocating his right shoulder and had to have surgery to repair it. Now he would end up returning in time for spring training that season, but in April of 2021, he had a collision with an A's pitcher and ended up breaking his left fibula. And unfortunately, this wasn't the end of his injuries this season. In September, he would collide with teammate Gavin Lux and ended up breaking one of his ribs. You just gotta feel awful for this dude at this point. Bellinger would go on to have his worst offensive stretch from 2021 through 2022, due in large part to these injuries. Now again, I'll give him a little bit of a pass here for the 2021 season because that's right when he was getting injured, but in 144 games in 2022, Bellinger hit 19 home runs, slashing only 210, 265, 389 for a 654 OPS with an 83 WRC plus, so 17% worse offensively than your average player, and his 1.8 F war is right below starter level production, and most of that then was coming from his defense. It was obvious at this point that Bellinger wasn't the same player anymore because of these injuries, and specifically those two things that we talked about that made him such a deadly hitter both took a big hit in 2021 and 2022. Starting with his power, we saw the exit velo drop down to the 58th percentile and the barrel percentage drop down to the 54th, so both still above average, but not quite what we were used to seeing from him, and his hard hit percentage was now down in the 39th percentile, so below average. 
But now was all of this because he couldn't generate the same power anymore because of the injuries? Or is it because of the other part of his game that we've talked about? Well, like we talked about earlier, a lot of hitting comes down to the pitches that you choose to swing at. And Bellinger in 2022 wasn't the same patient hitter that we saw putting up MVP numbers a couple seasons ago. He was now ranked in the 31st percentile in chase rate, and all of these extra strikes dropped him down to the 14th percentile in strikeout percentage. He was striking out over 10% more than he did in 2019. Bellinger had become way more aggressive at the plate. He was swinging more and swinging more often. And for a guy like this that has the swing and miss tendency already, like a lot of power hitters do, this turned a bit of a weakness into a major problem for him. After seeing Bellinger decline so much, the Dodgers ended up non-tendering him after the 2022 season, which means even though they still had team control over him, they didn't offer him a contract. He'd go on to sign a one-year, $17.5 million deal with the Chicago Cubs that has a mutual option for 2024, which means if both sides don't agree to that extra year, Bellinger becomes a free agent again. This kind of a contract is very much a prove-it deal, where the Cubs are saying, here's one more year, one more chance for you to go out and show that you're still a very effective player in the major leagues. And so far, Bellinger has proved much more than that. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider hitting like and subscribe as we get into breaking down Cody Bellinger's 2023 season. Through his first 28 games this season, he's hit seven home runs, slashing 299, 369, nice, 570 for a 939 OPS with a 150 WRC plus and 1.5 F war, which has him on pace for eight war in 150 games and 8 war is MVP level production. The numbers he's put up so far are obviously very similar to that MVP season that he had, but we're also seeing him start to play like he did in that MVP year. Mainly, we're seeing him be patient at the plate again, not quite what it was in 2019, but definitely getting back towards there. He's in the 56th percentile in chase rate, chasing about 2.5% more than he did in his MVP season, and he's in the 53rd percentile in walk rate, currently walking at 9%. Now this is obviously a great sign to see from him, because like we've talked about, when you stay more patient, you can use your power more on the mistakes, rather than those pitches that the pitcher wants you to hit. The problem is that the power hasn't been showing up so far this season. Now while he's still getting barrels, he's in the 61st percentile in barrel rate, his exit velo is in the 36th percentile, and his hard hit percentage is in the 30th percentile, which basically means when he's hitting the ball, one of two things is happening. He's either absolutely squaring it up, or he's struggling to hit the ball hard at all. So then if we look at how often he's making soft contact, his soft contact percentage is over 20% right now. He's 17th worst out of 175 qualified hitters. And taking out the 2021 season because of those injuries, this year is the lowest he's made hard contact in his career so far, with his max exit velo also being below average in the 45th percentile. So look, I want Cody Bellinger to come all the way back to the peak of what we saw him at. I hate seeing anybody's career get ruined by injuries, but I'm going to hold off on saying that he's all the way back quite yet. The numbers that he's put up so far are fantastic, and it's great to see him trusting himself at the plate again and being more selective and patient, but until he starts not only hitting the ball hard again for himself, but just in general in the league. I'm still gonna be a little hesitant to say that he's all the way back to his MVP form. And look, we're still very early in the season. We're about to see a lot of these guys start to kind of level out here a bit. I just hope in Bellinger's case that he starts hitting the ball a little bit better to more match the numbers that he's been putting up rather than the other way around where the numbers kind of come down to match how he's been hitting. So comment your thoughts down below on which of these two you think is going to kind of happen more and how his season's probably going to play out. And I'm sure the Dodgers would have been fine with bringing him back if they knew that he was going to put up numbers like this, but given how the season's gone so far, I don't think they're too upset. This is because the Dodgers replaced Bellinger in center field with one of their more middle tier prospects, rookie James Outman, who has been fantastic for them so far, flashing some abilities that could make him a potential superstar. But he has one big weakness that he's gonna have to really fix. 
Now to learn more about that, you can check out this video right here, or you can check out all of the videos from the 2023 season so far. Once again, especially if you've made it this far, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out a bunch and then you get to see more baseball content like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.